want to begin by welcoming all of you who are visiting with us today. We want to express how much we appreciate uh, your being here today. Uh, it warms our heart uh, to have you as our honored guest. And we want to afford you every, every hospitality, every courtesy. And if there's something that we say that causes you to think along the way, then we will say mission accomplished. Praise God for all of you. We are all human. We're all fallible, and then we all yes. we all make mistakes. Yeah. Don't read, re believe that. Read the bulletin today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, certain things that I wrote on there, misspellings and stuff like that. that uh, but I use the word. I meant in my mind to use the word etc. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> and when you get to that, you know what I'm talking about. We are all fallible creatures. None of us has it all together. Amen. Amen. None of us has got it all right. We have not caught the market on truth. And we will be arrogant and even naive to think that we know everything that God knows. But while we are here, we strive uh, to make heaven our home. We strive to be the uh, acceptable witness for God. And as we have embraced the theme for this month as we come to the last week of this month, and yeah, there were various interruptions in that, but we were talking about making your life a witness for God. If you were in court and you wanted to have some witnesses to come and speak in your behalf, wouldn't you want some reliable Amen. and credible witnesses? Uh, witnesses who could stand on truth, uh, we're hoping you're not guilty, right? <laughs> who are able to stand on truth and articulate truth in a way that's compelling uh, and insightful. So we who are believers, we are here to be a witness. And therefore, as we endeavor to be a credible witness, we need to examine ourselves, <coughs> ask ourselves, you know, Am I striving to be uh, an example of what we proclaim? Today's message is entitled, Supplying Divine Power to Fulfill Divine Purpose. You see, again, this week, this month was, you know, we had several interruptions because we dealt with uh, the prelude to the Passion of Jesus. When Jesus entered into Jerusalem in a triumphant way, as he came into Jerusalem, uh, there, were, there were many who shouted with excitement, with glee. Excitement because the Messiah <coughs> had come. And then on last Lord's Day, we talked about, you know, we, we said that, that entrance into Jerusalem set off a, a, a chain reaction, a sequence of events that culminated in his passion. In other words, his death on the cross. That's right. But we said that the story was not over. You know, sometimes you watch this, a movie would come out and they come out with a sequel. Well, then we talked about the sequel that entered on last Lord's Day because he was crucified, but then he, he, he rose again, triumphant over the grave. That's right. We talked about the significance of the resurrection. We didn't just chronicle the resurrection. No, no, no. Everybody can do that. We talk about the practical implication of that resurrection. In other words, how does that resurrection impact your living today? Right. 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 Sometimes when the, 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 the first movie was a smash and then they come with a sequel and then it did well in the box office as well, then they have to do a thought of trilogy. <laughs> they got to read that paper, right? And so, it's one thing to talk about the passion of Christ and then the resurrection of Christ. But you see that another component that will allow us to be effective as witnesses, we need confidence, don't we? Yes. We need assurance that God uh, is credible in what he wants to do. So therefore, now God gives us part three of this saga. And that is the ascension of Jesus back into glory. Right. And we're going to try to deal with that today, but when we deal with it, we're going to look at it from the standpoint of supplying divine power to fulfill a divine purposes. And the text that was read in your hearing, uh, Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, will give us 
Uh, I think what we need in order to be effective as witnesses, to, to plug in and tap into divine supply so that we can accomplish our divine purposes. The book of Acts is a continuation of the Gospel of Luke, written by the same person, Luke the physician, to the same person of the most excellent Theophilus. Uh, the Gospel of Luke sets forth the acts of Christ. And if you look at the book of Luke, it begins not only uh, it, before his birth, but it, it, it chronicles not only uh, the prophecy concerning his birth, the actual birth, and then uh, the ministry of Jesus, but notice it ends with Jesus being taken up. And then part two, we see the book of Acts, or Luke 2. And whereas Acts, uh, excuse me, whereas Luke, where the acts of Jesus in his earthly ministry, uh, the book of Acts uh, begins to show the acts of the Holy Spirit. That's right. yeah. The acts of the Holy Spirit as he works through the apostles. That's right. And so therefore, as we look closely, we will see more than simply the ascension of Jesus <laughs> and all of the benefits associated with that ascension. But we look closer. I think the gospel is showing us something that is going to help us uh, in our efforts to saturate this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it provides the very blueprint, the very blueprint necessary for effective evangelism. You see, most of the time we look at this world and this world billions of people. And if we listen to the prayer uh, of one of our brothers today talk about how, how much uh, uh, consternation and how much violence and how much wickedness is very pervasive in this world. When you look at the world, you begin to see, you know, we just is a little church. What can we do? How can we deal with the issues uh, that are devastating the society in which we live? We sometimes feel like Dave standing before the Goliath because of our own inadequacy, for our own smallness. But you see, David had a, mount, a giant slain faith. And because of his giant slain faith, he was able to stand firm and stand bold before the uncircumcised Philistine yeah. and say, you, I dare you. Yeah. Speak blasphemy against my God. Right. Yeah. He said, knock this stick off my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to have the, the audacity to stand and articulate the gospel knowing that we have divine backup. We have a power supply that cannot be matched. And so therefore we need to, to understand uh, that not only is it a blueprint uh, to saturate the world with the gospel of Christ, but perhaps even more importantly, it offers the key ingredient uh, for that uh, preparation. In other words, uh, the book of Acts, it helps us understand that uh, we receive the Holy Spirit in himself That's right, yeah. to take residence in us, to imbibe us with power. And give us the wherewithal to accomplish great things for God. Amen. You see, when you do little stuff that you can do, that's human achievement. Yeah. Human achievement does not glorify God. But no. when you step out on faith and you begin to do things that you know you can't do by yourself, then you have to rely on the divine supply. And we move from human achievement uh, into the threshold of divine accomplishment. Right. Do you want to accomplish great things for God today? Amen. Do you believe that God is able to empower you? Yes. As a community of faith, we have to believe and know for a certainty that God's got your back. Amen. And when God got your back, your back. Yes. Stay on your feet. Yes. Stay on your feet, everybody. Yes. And repeat after me these words, you know the drill. We the Lion Street Church of Christ. We the Lion Street Church of Christ. Exist for the purpose of glorifying God. Glorify God. serving up it. Making every member a minister. And taking his message to the mass. Now greet someone. Say, I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord. Let the church say amen. Church 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 amen. Church Again, supplying divine power amen. to fulfill divine purpose. I want to direct your attention to the book of Acts. And as we look at the first 11 verses of chapter 1. I want to say that the purpose of this message today is simply to show uh, 
that God can, can God, can we say God can? God can. What can God do? God can do what he wants to do. But he is God all by himself. He holds all things by the power of his love. And he holds us in the very hollow of his hand. So I want to show that God can and will supply everything that you need to be victorious in Christian living. Christian living. And he will also supply everything that you need to be effective as an ambassador for Christ. You see, part and parcel to uh, Christian living is fulfilling your obligation as a witness for God. But you see, you can't go out there by yourself uh, on, under the power of your own might. For the Bible says we're going to be strong, uh, not in our own strength, but in his strength. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. For the battle that we engage in is not some physical skirmish, but a spiritual warfare. And in, to engage in a spiritual warfare and to avoid becoming a casualty of war, you must be fully outfitted to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand all the wiles of the devil. And so uh, today we want to see that in, in order for us to embark on the very enterprise of soul winning, we have to make sure that we are fortified and fully equipped. Now God has his way of equipping us. He will equip you to fulfill the very purposes for which you have been created. He had a plan for you. He had a destiny for you. Now, whether or not you fulfill that destiny has everything to do with you being firmly planted uh, to Jesus, who is the true back. And so we understand uh, that, uh, that we ought not be fearful, that we, not all, we ought not be lax, that we ought not be uh, insincere in our profession of faith. You see, a non-believer can uh, spot someone who's playing church a mile away. See, we think we're getting away with something because we, we talk about, you know, thou this and thou that. And the world is looking at your living. That's so true. They're looking for you at your conversation, your mind of life. And even though you do good stuff, and even though you shun bad stuff, they look at your zeal and your enthusiasm. Mm. Are you sold out for Jesus? Mm. Are you a fan or a fanatic? Mm. Are you a fan for Jesus? Mm. Or is it some casual, nonchalant kind of thing? I'm a member of the church. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with being a member of the church. Mm. But what's wrong with being, I'm a member of the church. Period. Mm. There needs to be a common thing. <laughs> I'm a member of the church and this is the evidence right. of my relationship with Jesus. I'm a member of the body of Christ, and this is the, the evidence or the, uh, the, the proof of or the result of the fact that I'm connected to Jesus. Something that does not have to be strongly articulated if it's vehemently demonstrated. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, here we are today. Uh, we, we, we must uh, employ New Testament patterns to ensure New Testament results. It's something called the pattern principle. That even, you know, uh, uh, significant when we talk about obeying the gospel, when we talk about becoming a Christian, it is a pattern. If we want what they got, talking about the first century church, New Testament church, right. but we can read about the pages of scripture. Right. If we want what they got, then if we do what they did, then we'll get it. <laughs> In our text, we're talking about the qualification. The qualifications for effective witnessing. Now, contextually, and we look at this chapter, this, this, this beginning of this chapter, we recognize that we've already stated that Luke and, and Acts are a continuation. One of the acts of Christ in the Gospels. But see, when Jesus left, he did not leave the disciples by themselves. He left them a promise of another comforter who will come, speaking of the Holy Spirit. And now in books, in, in Acts chapter 7, uh, Acts chapter 1, uh, and throughout the book of Acts, we're now going to see the Acts 
Uh, I know some book titles say the Acts of the Apostles, and that's good. But it's really the Acts of the Holy Spirit as He acted upon the apostles and empowered them to engage in the witness process. So therefore, as we consider this farewell address, you know, Jesus, He rose again from the dead, right? And on last Lord's Day, we looked at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where we talk about the gospel uh, that was proclaimed, and the, they had received it, and they stood, were standing on it, they were saved by it, right? right. And then he said, I want to make known to you that first important, how Jesus died for our sin, the culture of the scripture. Yes, yes. and he, he, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day according to the scripture. And now we find ourselves couched in that narrative. Where Jesus has now resurrected and he has appeared uh, to uh, his disciples on several occasions. And in that uh, 40 day period, he was continuously giving them instruction concerning the kingdom of God. He was giving them instructions concerning uh, their mission of uh, taking the good news to the masses. And so we see this farewell instruction. Couch between uh, the post-resurrection uh, appearance and the pre-Pentecostal preparation. And he gives them three uh, assurances. Three affirmations, if you will, that we can take with us if we are going to be powerful, if we are going to be victorious. What then are those characteristics that we ought to possess? Promises from God to us that, it, that, that encourages us uh, that gives some, some girth in our spine, gives us a backbone to stand and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Notice with me, if you will, uh, the first thing I want to share with you and take this home, uh, and that is simply God supplies confirmations and instructions for success. Amen. God just don't say, just go out there and be successful. No, no, no. He supplies you with what you need in order to be successful. First of all, he gives you confirmation. And then he gives you uh, accurate instructions. Now, I want to say this. If you are to be successful in God's service, you must follow his instructions. Is that all right? You see, many times in my introduction, I talked about you know, how uh, the world is, is, is caught up in such uh, uh, mayhem. So we need to wring our hands, right? You know, what are we going to do? What can we do? Well, and then we go off to do things the very opposite of what God told us to do. Well, my goodness. No wonder the world is in turmoil. Uh, no wonder the church sometimes is in shambles. We're trying to do God's will our way. That's right. Y'all don't have to believe me on that. Y'all can get mad if you want to. But notice what the text says. <laughs> Again, verse 1 through 5. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus. Again, this is Luke speaking to Theophilus yet again. In Acts chapter 1, he says, Most excellent Theophilus, he said, Many have, 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 have endeavored to give a narrative of what Jesus did. I, having you know, fully investigated this thing, has compiled this information to give to you that you may know for sure, for certainty, what you have believed. And so therefore he writes to him once again. Uh, he says, I'm, I, I want to remind you of the form of the first letter. Mm -hmm. The former treaties. I have made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began writing both to do and teach. Until that day in which he was taken up. After that, uh, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself after, uh, alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them, watched them, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water. But you should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. First, we look at the assurance 
in the kingdom mission. Assurance in the kingdom purpose. Uh, he gives them a reminder. Uh, he gives a reminder of those former things that he expounds in his first letter. Notice, talking about, he begins to chronicle all the things that Jesus began both to do and to teach. So he talks about uh, the, uh, the miracles and the doctrine. All that Jesus began to do and to teach. It's one thing to speak some good words. But here, Luke is talking about uh, the words that were backed up by his works. Notice, he began to do, and see, ministry is important. But ministry is to clear the debris out of the way so you can receive the message. And so, the message of God, what he taught, was reinforced and validated by what he did. People would follow him from all parts of, 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 of that region to hear him teaching. But sometimes they need some ministry before they can hear him teaching. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we fed multitudes. Right. Yes, it's because they were hungry. Yes. But you see, uh, if your stomach is growling so loud, you can't hear what the message is. That's true. In other words, there are needs that need to be met. Right. And when you meet needs, you, it becomes uh, uh, the, 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 the avenue through which you can share the good news of Jesus. Now they can hear you. And not only that, when, when sometimes there's some things that are said that can be hard to receive. In John chapter 6, when Jesus said, if anyone follow me, you have to eat my uh, flesh and drink of my blood. And many said, wait a minute. That's a hard saying. And the Bible said, many of them said, you know what? These were people, these were disciples, these were followers, right? And they said, we can't even get with this program anymore. And they got to church. <laughs> Yeah, they, 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 we can't hear this. And they turn and walk with him no more. And Jesus turned to those who were, who had spent quality time with him. Those he had deposited his life in. He said, will you also go away? And notice what Peter said. He said, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And so, all the things that Jesus began to do and teach. That's important. Now, through the post-resurrection appearance, we see uh, assurance and confirmation. When Jesus rose from the dead, no one saw him rise from the dead, did they? Did they? Did they? Did they? No. They didn't need to see him right from the day. We know why? Because he appeared to them. Yeah. That's right. That's like said, me and someone, we're talking, and, and you tell me that Jesus rose from the dead. I said, please. <laughs> Did you see it? No, I didn't see it. Well, I didn't see these, so I'm not going to believe it. And then you turn around and he is standing right there. <laughs> Don't believe me, ask Thomas. <laughs> and, and so. Notice what the text says. He says, uh, now during this 40 day period that he's been with them, mm -hmm. he's been appearing to them, manifesting himself, and teaching them. Mm -hmm. And then he says something very, very important. He gave them commandments through the Spirit. He gave them some commandments. He, 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 he said some things pertaining to uh, the kingdom that will be established here on earth. Now, the important thing I want to bring out in this particular passage is this. He gave these commandments to his apostles. And that's, I didn't say to the disciples right now. <coughs> it says he gave these commandments to um, his apostles. It goes on further, it says that he had chosen. I think that is important. Because um, many are called, but few are chosen. Everybody can't be the preacher. 
Everybody can't be certain things. But we can all be a Christian. We can all share our faith. We can all live godly lives. We can all become ambassadors for Christ. But you know, everyone is called to do that, but then he selects. He chooses specifically. Don't have time to rehearse uh, the, uh, the situation that uh, resulted in him choosing the twelve. But the Bible says he went out and just prayed to make sure that he made the right selection. Now, you know, we talk about the omnipotence and all that kind of stuff uh, of, of, of Jesus, well, of God. But when Jesus was on earth, you know what he did? The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 that he divested himself. He emptied himself from privileges and prerogatives of deity, yes. depending on the Holy Spirit. Yes. But he was in 40 days. He's chosen them and he's spending time with them, talking about and rehearsing the things concerning uh, the kingdom of God. But then he says, Now, I want you to stay in Jerusalem. Verse 4. He said, And being assembled together uh, with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, Ye have heard of me. And then he goes on to say, uh, John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Looking forward to the Pentecost that would happen some 10 days later. That's right. Now, I said a moment ago, we have to do God's will, God's way, right? right. He gave specific instructions to them. He said, do not leave Jerusalem. Oftentimes, we find ourselves just not following instructions. Isn't that right, Brother Murphy? <laughs> so, I don't mean no harm. But sometimes, you know, the Word of God tells us a thing. And we find ourselves doing our own thing. And so, we wonder why we don't get the results that we want to get. Well, we have to go back and look at the blueprint and ask ourselves, are we adhering to the instructions? See, don't be like me. If I got to assemble some kind of furniture, I got to put together this TV stand or whatever, I get through it. I, I did a good job. Now, what am I going to do with the rest of these screws I got left over? <laughs> yeah, I find out when I set the TV on there. <laughs> You see, the problem in order to accomplish great things for God, we must operate under the power of God's supply. And he tells them, he promises them, you are going to receive something. Don't leave. Don't leave Jerusalem. That's your instruction. Uh, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit. That's your promise. In order to receive the benefit, in order to receive the promise, you have to first adhere to the instruction. Don't leave, but stay here. Yes, but you know, there are still those who may be looking for us. But he has not all the way died down. And they may be still fearful. He said, I got something for that too. Notice, not only does he supply a confirmation, uh, his appearance was confirmation, but he also gives instruction. Don't leave, because I got something special for you. And when you receive this, it's going to be only cracking. He didn't say it that way, but <laughs> so, what was that version I was reading? <laughs> I, I tell it's mine, okay? <laughs> but secondly, God supplies spiritual power for divine accomplishment. Let's look to what the Bible says in verses 6 through 8 in this very same text. Notice in 6 he said, When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Mm. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times nor the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and the utmost part of the earth. Let me just say this. I'm going to pause on this one because this one is, is really... There's nothing so difficult to remove 
from the mind as a bias in favor of false opinions. Mm. That makes sense? In other words, a person who is convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. Over and over and over, Jesus has been talking about this kingdom that he is going to establish. It's not an earthly kingdom. He said this is a, this is a spiritual kingdom. This resolve, it, it involves the, the new birth, which is not a physical birth, but a spiritual birth. The weapons that we fight with are not physical weapons, but spiritual weapons. We're breaking down strongholds. We're, we're engaged, engaging in spiritual warfare. And after all the teaching concerning dispelling the myth, dispelling the notion that this is something where we're going to come in and, and Jesus is going to sit on the throne on earth and then we're going to uh, overthrow the Roman government and we're going to have a wing ding day all night and we're going to party now. Yeah. Because Jesus is here. Because his earth is no, he said this is a this this is something that uh, requires you being born from above yes. of the spirit. And even as he, throughout his earthly ministry, some three and a half years, he's been uh, uh, telling them that this is a spiritual warfare, a spiritual kingdom. And then, at this moment, they come back and say, we will set up the kingdom on earth. Right. Jesus, he didn't even address it. Sometimes you don't want to address everything. Yeah. You know what he said? He didn't even tell them. He had, he had, you know, they had come up with this erroneous notion. And again and again and again, he had already told them, no, it's not going to be, it's not a physical thing. This is celestial, not terrestrial. This is a spiritual, not a, a karma. This is a, a heavenly, not an earthly thing. And then they said, are you going to do it when you are going to? And so Jesus, so Jesus, see, I would have said, See, I'd have lost it. But see, Jesus, and I notice what Jesus says again. When they begin to ask him the question, is it now you will do it? He said, it's not for you to know the time nor the season, which to find his word in his own power. He said, now let's get to the real thing here. He said, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses unto me. That's what he wants to put across. See, sometimes we want to get off into the speculative notions about, you know, when is this going to happen and when is this going to happen because we have a lot of turmoil going on. We begin to look and say, this is a sign of this and this is a sign of that. The Father did not choose to reveal. See, if God would have revealed that on, you know, what's today's date? Day? On the 28th of April, 2019, I'm coming back. What would you do if you knew the name of your last day? Now you want to pray. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, see, I'm, I'm going to do my thing all this day. I know it's the 28th yet. I'm going to do it and then I'm going to pray. <laughs> Look at the clock. He wants us to work. He wants us to, to be engaged in ministry up until, not wait until. And so he doesn't give us that. See, erroneous notions can survive the plainest proofs to the contrary. I'm, you know, I may say that the sky is blue. And, and, and you, in your heart, believe that it's green. And you go ahead and start saying it's blue, but when the rubber hits the moat road and you really get to get comfortable, you begin talking about the green sky again. <laughs> they have been convinced, but they still had not embraced the truth of what Jesus was communicating. That's a word for all of you who would share your faith. Understand that, you know, hey, Love folk because there was a time when you didn't get it. And they ought to give you compassion to deal with those who are yet to get it. And so Jesus shows that side uh, of compassion. Uh, he begins to, uh, again, the erroneous opinions maintain a secret dominance in one's heart and one's mind. 
and is revealed in certain circumstances. But the point I want to make today uh, for all of you who are striving to, uh, to do and to be what God wants you to be and do, that we have to face that through Scripture. Because a man convinced against his will of the same opinion still. And they were still of the opinion that it was an earthly kingdom. Regardless of the fact that Jesus had taught them to the contrary. Notice. He said, I'm coming to restore. Uh, they asked when you will restore the kingdom. They still didn't get it. And so he says, I want you to rest your confidence. Not in the predictability of events. But rest your confidence. In God. Right. See, we get so we get we, we put confidence in the wrong things. We 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 put confidence in our security that we find in different things. We put confidence in associations, in material things. But you know, we have to make sure that we put our confidence in, in God. You shall receive power. I'm promising you that. But that promise is conditional. Many of God's promises to you are conditional. The reason why you haven't received it yet is because they came with conditions. He said, you have received power. Yes, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. But don't you leave Jerusalem. Because I'm going to put the power right here in Jerusalem. It's going to come down to Jerusalem. And you're over here in Galilee somewhere. You're not in the position to receive the power. And that's what all we talk about. I didn't get my power. Now you did the power was given, you was just not in a position to receive it. There you go. And so that's why he said, stay in Jerusalem, and you're going to receive power, and then you're going to be my witnesses, right? But the, the qualification for being a witness is uh, receiving the power. And the receiving the power is based on the condition that you adhere to the instruction of Jesus. Walking around here with no power, man, everybody can you get no power. The power has been given. Now just tap into the power supply. You shall receive power. What? After the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And yet the Holy Spirit is going to be your guide. He's going to be your comforter. He's going to uh, guide you to, into all truth. He's going to empower you to speak and to, to walk in a way that brings attention to who you are. They may hear your witness and your testimony. You shall be my witnesses. Notice, here's the blueprint here. He said, you shall be my witnesses. Uh, but he doesn't say you can be a witness in and everywhere. He said, you'll be my witnesses where in Jerusalem. You stay in Jerusalem because this is where we're going we're gonna to set this thing off. In Jerusalem. Jerusalem being the, uh, the holy city. Where well, everyone has come and made a pilgrimage uh, uh, to Jerusalem to engage in uh, Passover, uh, Pentecost, sorry. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the Feast of Pentecost. Go back and read Leviticus chapter 23. You'll begin to find out what Pentecost is all about. Uh, uh, the seventh, after you have engaged in this ceremony for seven uh, Sabbath, the next day, it's Pentecost. Seven Sabbaths. That means seven weeks, right? Seven days a week, seven times what? Seven is what? The next day is what? The word Pentecost simply means 50. The 50th day, they, had, they, they celebrated Pentecost. And it was on that day, the Bible says that they received uh, the power that Jesus had told them about in this passage right here. And so therefore, uh, they are to be in Jerusalem. And then here's another thing about Jerusalem. See, when you witness, you need to start at the right place. He says, you are going to begin right there where you receive the power. And then you want to be a witness in your immediate circle. See, sometimes we want to send money to all parts of the world. Nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. You know, foreign missions are necessary. And there's scriptures to back it up. But don't get so caught up in sending your resources way over there and you won't knock on somebody's door right across the street. You won't deal with your own people. So you better start first in your Jerusalem. 
You have to start where you are. Begin, see, when you begin to share with those who you have an affinity with, certain commonality with the ones who saw you when you were just a Galilean. Now they see you uh, being the chief representative of the kingdom of heaven. All these Galileans, all Galilean, they came from the ghettos of Galilee. Yeah, I knew you when you hung out on the rock. I knew you back when you was doing your thing. I knew, I knew when you, I, I know some of you. <laughs> yes, yeah, and then they saw these men. Aren't not these men all Galileans? These are ignorant and unlearned men. They have not gone to any distinguished universities, no uh, 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 establishments of higher learning, none of that. And here now, here we hear them speaking the wonderful things of God, speaking in languages they have never learned, unknown tongues. Speaking, they have not learned or acquired these disciplines, and yet here they are. How is it that we all here in our own native tongue? Power! Power! But they did not possess Christ. You see, he said, You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and then in Judea, Judea uh, and Samaria. You know, you see, you know. Jerusalem, they were Jews, right? They were their own folk, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, and, and, and the outer parts of Judea. But then, see, Samaria yeah. were that was called a, they were that mongrel yes. race. Yes. When, when, when they were, when, 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 when Israel uh, and then later Judah uh, was taken into captivity, many times what they would do is they would bring a nation in, and other nations would be brought in, they would intermingle. Sure. So they would lose their sense of identity. Mm. When, 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 when black people, when we Africans were brought over, yes. you know, they were sold off and broken up, and so they were able to lose their identity. Yes. That's a, sh a strategy of the enemy. But notice, because Samaria was this mongrel nation, and, and I don't have time to get into some of the, the rationale behind why they did not associate with one another. Uh, the Jews felt they were better than the Samaritans. Remember the woman at the well? Right. That was a Samaritan woman. Right. He said, how you, wait, wait, how, woo, woo, wait, hold on. What are you doing talking to me? You a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. You know the line has already been drawn. We're not going to talk to each other. And so, once you deal with your own Jerusalem, then you need to go into your Samaria. Yeah. There are people who you may be at odds with, maybe at odds with you. People who don't uh, share your, 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 your affinity with. May not look like you, may not act like you, may not walk, may not think like you, may not share your values or anything like that. Right. But you still need to go to them. Yeah. The Apostle Paul said, I became all things all me. Yeah. For the purpose of winning something. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. How do you cross barriers? Unless you have, see, we need confirmation, we need empowerment, we need, we need something that, that moves us out of our comfort zone. Because before they received the Holy Spirit, what were they doing? They were hiding behind our doors. Scared to death. Folks knock on the door, they all be quiet. Tell them we ain't here. <laughs> but you see, when you get power, you know, you, you lose fear. When you get power, you be, you, you're now emboldened to do things that you used to not do. Yes. Yes. Notice. Um, they're now able to rely on divine resources. Because they're going to go to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and then to the uttermost part of the earth. You see, even, even then, uh, there's some things already working. God is perhaps already working on certain folks' hearts. Maybe he's working on Cornelius' heart. Hello? Maybe he's working on Lydia's heart. That's right. You know, but when the gospel gets over there to those Gentiles, he's already working on their hearts. See, before this, see, you want to share your share the word with somebody? Understand it ain't about you. Sometimes before you knock on the door, God is already working on somebody's heart. See, you they already going through some situations in their life that you don't know anything about. They're already going through some traumatic experiences. There is there is financial uh 
uh, uh, disarray. There, there are commitment issues within the family. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the closed doors that we don't know anything about. And the same person who slammed the door in your face six months ago. Now because God has been working in their lives. He's been moving in their hearts and, and bringing situations and circumstances to bear in their life. Yeah. Now they're receptive to hear. That's right. yeah. And we say, well, I remember six months ago I said something to them. And they didn't say anything, so I'm not going to say anything anymore. Mm. God is the one who prepares the hearts right. to receive the word. Well, before the preacher knocks on the door, God is already moving in those people's lives. And so notice this. So we've talked about the fact that he gave them instruction. He has appeared to them and confirmed through his very appearance, uh, through the words that he gave them during that 40-day period. And then he gave them final instructions about not leaving Jerusalem uh, because the promise is that you're going to receive power and then you're going to be my witnesses. I know you still have some, you don't know it all yet, I'm going to, you still talk about the earthly, you know, all that kind of stuff. The earthly king and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to send the comforter. I'm not going to deal with that. He doesn't address that. He said, you know what? I already got my Bible out there to show them. He didn't deal with that. He knew that he was going to send the comforter who was going to be with him, who was going to guide them to all truth, to illuminate the scripture to them and give them the power to carry out their mandate. Right. And so finally, we see God supplies hope and confidence by the ascension itself. You see, we need hope. We need confidence. And it's through the ascension uh, of, of, of Jesus that they, they're now filled with joy. First, when he was going up, I'm saying, wow, you know, you see this as the kingdom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's notice the text. In verse 9, through 11. Then the message will be yours. He said, And when he had spoken these things, while they uh, beheld, uh, while they were looking right at him, he was taken. Watch this, guys. Well, I don't know about you. Don't, don't just look at this. We just read it. You are there. Can you imagine all these things that, first of all, he rose from the dead? Second of all, he appeared to you. And he keeps appearing, giving instruction to you. And now you said they're listening to him talk. And all of a sudden, yeah. he just started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I know there was a, a time in my life I used to be dunking basketball. But I wasn't rising like this. <laughs> and now, right now, like, it hurts to think about it. But notice, Jesus, as they, as they beheld him. He began to just, can you see that? What would you do if you were there? And, and all of a sudden, he just started. What did you try to hold him down? <laughs> what, what, what? He just started just rising and just, and they see him and they are beholding this, this, this phenomenon and they don't know what to do about it. They're just like, and now, now he's going on out to the crowd. And he's going on and they're still looking up. Can you imagine what's going on in their mind? What's going on? See, this is something. See, again, I said they did not see uh, the resurrection. But they didn't need to because he appeared to them. But now, uh, you can't say he ascended. You, they had to see that. As they were there, he began to get a scene on up into the clouds, up into the heavens, out of their sight. And now they didn't see him to get up. <laughs> Yes, it says, it says that while they look steadfastly toward heaven, he already gone. And he went up. Behold, two men stood by the where they come from. <laughs> What's up with this? Two men stood about him in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee. No, he goes back to Galilee. Don't forget where you came from. That's a sermon right there. Sometimes you get a little anointing and you get a little something, something going on in your life. You know, you get two nickels a row together. He said, you are Galilean. I knew you. <laughs> I know you're Galilean. You men of Galilee. You know you came out of the ghetto of Galilee. God has now, uh, uh, why stand ye gave it up into heaven? The same Jesus 
which is taken up from you into heaven, shall, watch this, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. See, this is the moment. See, they need some assurance. They need some joy. They need some certification. They need something, some confirmation. The truth of the Christian religion hinges on the dead, burial, resurrection, right? But also it's found foundation in his ascension. Because if he ascended, the Bible says the same man in which he went up, he's coming back. Are you glad that Jesus is coming back again? The better question is, do you believe that Jesus is coming back again? He said in like manner, as you see him go up, he's coming back again. I don't know about you, but it was a confirmation. Uh, the apostles can now state with confidence. They know what Jesus is. He's there on the right hand of the Father. They can say with confidence. Uh, it settles the question about the nature of his kingdom. You know, they asked about the kingdom. He didn't address it, right? But he begins to just go on up. This is a heavenly kingdom. He's going to reign. This is a, the, the, to reign means to rule, the rule of God. The word kingdom simply means uh, the rule or the reign of God. God is going to reign in the hearts of men. It's going to be a spiritual reign. It settles the question about the nature of the kingdom. Now he has finished his work. Yes, he accomplished what he wanted to accomplish uh, when he rose from the dead. But now that he has sinned, he gives the last injection or infusing them with a confidence and with a hope. Because now I can stand before the magistrates who say, I'm going to kill you. And if you kill me, you just simply transfer my address to the whole office. Because I'm going to go be with Jesus. Is. And I saw him a sin. I saw him a sin. And so, you know, I'm not wearing it. I'm not afraid of what you can do right. to me. Because I want to ascend one of these days. Right. Yeah, there's going to be a resurrection. When Jesus comes back, when the, when the clouds are open, and he descends from heaven with the archangel and the trumpet of God, and he comes to get me. Yeah. You speak for yourself. Yeah. But when he comes to for me, I'm going to ascend. I'm going to go where he's going. I'm going to be where he is. I'm not worried about what goes on down here. Now because the relationship that I have with him guarantees that I'm going to ascend because he got up and he went up. Oh my gosh. To confirm their faith concerning the second coming of Christ, these two men say, why stand ye gazing into the heaven? The same Jesus you saw go up, he's coming back to get you. And then when he comes to get you, you go on with him. It completes the gospel message. Get ready right. to meet him. The gospel question is, are you ready to meet him? Will you be ready when he comes? Well, how do you know he's coming? Well, because, because he rose from the dead and he ascended into heaven Amen. with the promise that I'm going to come back to receive you in my father's house of many mansions. A many dwelling, many rooms. In the, you can't. It, it, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's sometimes we got we got people in the office talking about we can't have any more immigrants coming because we're full. Aren't you glad that in heaven there's room? You don't have to show no papers. You don't have to begin to go through no body check and all that kind of stuff. If your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you can come right on in. And you don't have to worry about somebody trying to put you out. Jesus and I have prepared a place for you. He did that. And so here we are today. Uh, that which energizes you to live out your hope in Christ must also be uh, what energizes and spurs you to obedience in the biblical blueprint for effective witnessing. Again, we're talking about the blueprint. You can have witnesses here, there, and there. Jerusalem. Judea and Samaria, another part of the world. Yeah, it was only happened when you received the power. So sometimes we're going to run out there with no power. And we just like clouds with no water. Church growth and kingdom expansion is not a human achievement, but rather it is a divine accomplishment That's right. that requires divine resources to ensure divine fulfillment. Don't you want to go where Jesus is? 
Don't you want to be ready uh, to meet him when he comes again? How do you know he's coming again? Because we have been given uh, the promise from heaven on high that he's going to come back again. Oh, yes. I don't know about you, and wherever you are, God bless you. But I want to be there in that number. I want to be ready when he comes back. If you're here today, and you have been afforded the opportunity once again, every time you inhale, you don't know if you're going to exhale. That's right. And when you exhale, you don't know if you're going to inhale again. Right. But as long as the blood running down in your veins, you have an opportunity to give your life to Him. I really don't care what you've been through. Now, if you have some issues that we need to counsel, yeah, we can deal with that. But Jesus said, I'll accept you. All you need to do is come to me. All you who are weary and heavy laden, just come. I'll take care of this. You just come and find your rest. Yeah. See, we want to take care of all our men before we can find rest. God is the one who gives rest, not you. Yes. You are the one who created your mess. <laughs> Jesus came to deal with your mess right. so that you can enter into his rest. Yes. And we do that by saying, yes, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that he died for me, he was buried, and rose again the third day, and ascended on high to be at the right hand of the Father. And yes, I believe that uh, 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 the gospel and it is so moving when I'm impacted uh, of the indelible impression that the love of God has made on me. I'm now ready to scrap my agenda and take a big agenda. In other words, I'm ready to turn from the world and turn to Jesus. We call that repentance. And I'm ready to confess, yes, I believe that Jesus is indeed the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I'm willing to be buried in the watery grave of baptism for the remission of my sins. Why? Because it's with that the Bible says you shall receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Well, no, maybe that's what the way to do. No, he told them, remember we said it was the what? The apostles. Yes. And they would receive the, the, the power yes. to present the message. Right. Now you just have to respond to the message. Right. Say, men and brethren, what must we do? And he would say, repent, be baptized. Name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Whoever you are and wherever you are. I hope this message resonates in some way with you. If you need prayer, if you need some clarity on which way to go, we can counsel with you, we can pray with you. If you've been away from the church and you want to come back and be reestablished and be restored to the fellowship, if you need to obey the gospel, all of that yes. is afforded to you. Yes. All you need to do is respond. And we, as our prayer, uh, uh, I don't know what you call you guys. I did it. <laughs> And they position themselves. They're here for the purpose of uh, receiving uh, your, your request. Whatever's on your heart, these men are here to entertain that, pray with you, counsel you, and uh, give you good instruction that you can do the right thing. Now I'm going to ask that the, the singers begin to sing something. And as they're singing, understand that this is your moment. This is your opportunity to respond to God. He said, all you need to do is come. Something that, as together we say, sing a song of the earth, we invite you to respond.